Okay, um, I'd now like to introduce Dr. Shantanu Sharma. Shantanu Sharma is working as a public health specialist with the MAMTA Health Institute for Mother and Child, a not for profit organization in for four years. He's pursuing his PhD part time from Lund University in Sweden. He has experience of academics, research, implementation, and communication. So his graduation and his MD in community medicine from Delhi University and a degree of diplomat of national board from the National Board of Examinations in India. He did a one-year diploma in health and family welfare management from a national institute in India. He has over 14 publications in peer-reviewed journals and is currently working on a maternal child health and nutrition project. He has been working with 15 teams across different states in India. He's engaged in building the technical competence and monitoring, evaluation skills of the staff and evidence generation of this intervention. He's worked as a medical officer for six months and is involved in training midwives since then. He won the second best poster and oral presenter award in two recent international conferences. He was part of the group working on post hoc evaluations of adolescent sexual and reproductive health projects and programs at the World Health Organization in Switzerland. So now I'd like to hand over to Shantanu um, and uh, let's hear his really interesting presentation. Anthony, you have them. You have the floor. Yeah. Hey, everyone, and uh, good morning, good evening, and uh, good afternoon for all those who are joining us from uh, different continents. So right now, I'm Stephen, and uh, I have been working uh, in an Indian organization, as Chris has told before, that I'm working with Mamta Health Institute, and also I'm doing. So I'm presenting today. Any conception of the difficulty using M Health. Okay. Shantanu, your sound is coming and going. You, um, I'm not sure if you're moving around in relation to your microphone or putting a hand in front of it, but your sound was fading in and out then. Okay. Um, so let me talk uh, very briefly about Mamta Health Institute for Mother and Child. So it's a not-for-profit institution which is based in New Delhi, India. And uh, they, this institute has seen a journey of 28 years. It started as a small clinic in Delhi and now it's an institution of over 900 staff. The institute has reached to more than 100 districts across 20 states of India and some five developing countries in Asia, which includes Bangladesh, Nepal, Indonesia, and some countries in African continent as well. Four thematic areas that the institute primarily works on includes maternal, child, and adolescent health, sexual and reproductive health, non-communicable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, cervical cancer, infectious diseases like tuberculosis, HIV, hepatitis B and C. And I'm in pro primarily I'm working on maternal child and adolescent health division in Mamta at the moment. The Institute has experience of working with over 10 academic institutions nationally and internationally, including Lund University in Sweden, Karolinska Institute in Sweden, Oregon. Then we it has also worked with King's College of London, and in India, it's also working with King's George Medical University, BHU, and did some of the daily medical universities as well. Now, and the Institute has also been working with over 14 development sector partners in the past as, and some of the corporates like CETA, DFID, Global Fund, UNFPA, Ford Foundation, yes. So that was uh, an information about my institute that I've been working with. So let me start my presentation giving a short background about the presentation. So we are celebrating this day on International Day of Midwives on 5th of May and everybody knows that midwives are cornerstone in health for all. And what do we mean by health for all is that the midwives, if we talk about midwives and nurses globally, nearly 50% of them, they constitute the health workforce. And they play a very critical role in health promotion, in disease prevention, in delivering primary care, community care. And they are very critical in the delivery of essential health services and core to the strengthening. And particularly they're important because they are reaching to those people who are hard to reach, though they're reaching to the places where it's important. So that's why it's important to actually invest in midwives because they are the one who are giving us the last mile. 
India, yes, the second most populous uh, populated country in the world. It's also having a capacity of over 1,75,000 uh, midwives and around a million other primary health workers. So in India, primary health workers, we call them as accredited social health activist ASHAs and some Anganwadi workers, AWW. So we have huge cadre of uh, health workers. If you look at the current midwife population ratio, it's around 1.3 to uh, 1.3 per 1,000 population. If you look at nurses plus midwife uh, population ratio, then it's somewhere around 2.1. And the WHO talks about like it should have ideally should have somewhere between 3.8 to 4 per 1,000 population. So we are still far behind the ideal target, and we really need to work towards that. And in India, we have seen in the last five years, we have seen a lot of investment in midwives covering their uh, primarily in education, on their performance incentivization, the working enabling environment. Recently, in 2008, we have these guidelines on midwife education by government of India. Uh, and that's and one of my colleagues in the morning must have talked about it, uh, the recent guidelines, because that the guidelines focus on investing in midwives, education, task shifting, the, and building a curriculum which is based on ICM standard of essential competences for midwives. So this is how this is what is the recent, uh, I mean, advances in midwife education in India. Okay, so the second pillar that is there in my presentation is regarding the periconception window. Now periconception window, if it takes, it is it includes the time which is preceding, including and following conception. So it includes preconception period as well. And why it is important to work on periconception care? Because there is a pressing need. If you look at the figure one in my subsequent slide, uh, so these are some of the indicators that I collected from National Family Health Survey 2015-16. And if you look at those indicators, prevalence of underweight women with body mass index less than 18. So around 23% of women in India are underweight. And if you look, if you compare them, if you divide them into two different categories of those from 15 to 19 and those from 20 to 24, you'll find that those in the late adolescence, 15 to 19 years, this percentage is even higher, around 42% of adolescent girls in the late adolescence are underweight. India at the moment is suffering from dual epidemic of again both communicable and non-communicable diseases. So if you and also from underweight and obesity. So if you look at the prevalence of obesity, obese women with BMI more than 25, around 21% of uh, women and girls in India are obese. If you look at the other indicators of periconception care, let's talk about the unmet needs for family planning. It's again high. It's around 13% for both spacing as well as limiting. And the use of any contraceptive by married women, around 57% of uh, married women, they are using contraceptive at the moment. Uh, tobacco consumption is not pretty common in terms of percentage, but if you convert them into absolute numbers, definitely it's quite high. If we look at the prevalence of anemia, again, that's also a very important uh, factor that we need to, and that's what the country is also trying to achieve is to reduce anemia because it's highly prevalent among women and girls. It's around, so around more than 50% of women and girls in India are anemic at the moment. And not just that, even including physical violence. If you look at the percentage, around 27% of women have ever experienced physical violence since the age of 15 years. So this makes, I'm coming back to the, my previous slides. So that makes a case for investing a lot on pre periconception care. And WHO in 2013, they did an expert level group meeting wherein a lot of people from different organizations, including uh, community based organizations, including NGOs, they came and they put forward there that what should be a basic minimum package for periconception care in countries like LMICs like India, Bangladesh, or uh, Nepal. So if you look at this figure number two and you can see this, this was the preconception care packet that was proposed by World Health Organization in 2013. So they said that a minimum basic package should include services like family planning, vaccine preventable diseases, should address nutrition and micronutrient supplementation like folic acid supplementation, should work towards tobacco cessation, including second and smoke, should work towards reducing harmful environmental exposure and improving sexual health and behavior of young couples or newly married couples through screening, through counseling and treatment. So based on the limited resources and the financial uh, support the country can adopt, but there should be a minimum basic packet that has been discussed. But yes, if 
the resources and finances if they allow that the country can have an expanded package of investing more on mental health problems on intimate partner violence preventing intimate partner violence screening for genetic conditions prevention of non-communicable diseases and so on so coming back to my slide again on background so so this makes a case for preconception care and periconception care as an important intervention in countries like india and other southeast asian countries Government of India in 2014 launched a reproductive maternal newborn child and adolescent health uh, program. But somehow, but if you remember, that, if you read that document, you will find that still in that package, the preconception care and young couples were not prioritized. So still, there's a lot of scope and there's a lot of need to address preconception or preconception care in Indian settings. The third of my uh, pillar that, talk, that I talk about in the intervention is M Health. M Health includes any kind of app. It's, it's, it's an area of multiple intervention, which includes the use of mobile for various purposes like SMS, for text messages, for WhatsApp messages, using of interactive voice response system. Yes, it has an advantage of reaching a wider population, hard to reach population. It's cost effective, it's time efficient, and also it reduces barriers to communication, which makes an effective use of technology as well. So, so I'm starting up with the project now. So that project that I'm going to discuss about, it was a 18 month long project, which is supported by MacArthur and Bar Foundation. And the overall aim of the project was to strengthen district health systems for mainstreaming preconception care within the continuum of care approach into the national program of RMNCHA so that we can see an improvement in maternal health outcomes of young married women. So this program was implemented by Mamta Health Institute for Mother and Child and it was evaluated by Population Council of India. We want to my next slide. So what were the objectives? It was the objective of this project was to develop a user friendly ML tool, which is interactive voice response system IVRS for increasing periconception care service delivery in rural settings of India. Second objective was to build the capacity of midwives and primary health workers on preconception care counseling through IVRS. And third was to test the operational feasibility and acceptability of IVRS in rural settings of India through rigorous research methods. Now, so this uh, project was implemented, as you can see in the map, this project was implemented in two states, one uh, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. So, uh, so this Uttar Pradesh is somewhere lying in north of India and in west of India is Rajasthan, northwest. And uh, so one district each in Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh was selected. So it was Churu district in Rajasthan and Muzaffarnagar in Uttar Pradesh. And two blocks within each district were selected and roughly 20 village across uh, so it was around five villages in each blocks making uh, summing up to 20 villages totally and then we had enrolled some 36 midwives in the project some 219 primary health workers which include primarily accredited social health activists ashras and other health workers like anganwadi workers catering to a population of over 25,000 between 15 to 25 years and primarily the population was women so the project had different phases of intervention. It included a pre-intervention phase, an intervention phase, an evaluation phase. So in the pre-intervention phase, we did some baseline assessment of the knowledge and skills of primary health workers. We developed a training module. So we have a different training module, uh, one for the master trainers that, so master trainers were auxiliary nurse midwives and lady health visitors. And we have one module for the primary health workers that is accredited social health activists. And, um, we developed this IVRS tool. So we have an IT partner that was Gramwani, which is now called uh, Onion Dev. So this, uh, so Gramwani, they developed this IVRS tool. So, and I will show you in my subsequent slides, the interface of IVRS as well. And um, we developed some baseline and line data collection tools. In the intervention phase, we build the capacity of midwives with the master trainers for primary health workers. And midwives further gave mentoring and supportive solution to primary health workers. In addition, we also did some awareness generation activities in the field. IVRS was rolled out, data was managed, and in line, the end line, we did some assessment of IVRS and increase in knowledge of its users. 
So if you look at this intervention flow chart, so there are we, Mamta Health Institute for Mother and Child. So we have uh, an IT partner, uh, Gramwani, who, uh, the agency which developed the content for the IVRS. So with the help of, I, so we did this training on preconception and periconception care to midwives. Uh, so it was a cascade model of training where we trained these midwives on how to use IVRS and also what is preconception care because preconception and periconception care has not been uh, addressed very well in countries like India. It's still in a very nascent stage. So we uh, so during our training we did that and the midwives further went and uh, trained the primary health workers on how to use. Uh, uh, IVRS tool. There were some issues in uh, because uh, as Roger's diffusion of model says that uh, technology is not something that comes very automatically. You need to learn and eventually it's the practice over a period of time that gives you uh, competency. So it's how they learned over a period of time how to use IVRS and uh, and these primary health workers they further. So there were the two main functions of IVRS that the IVRS was acting as a job aid for self learning. I mean the primary health workers can call and learn a lot about counseling, about preconception care through IVRS and also the community and the women, particularly from between 15 to 24 years, they can also call and uh, through IVRS to our center and then they can have their queries being addressed. And uh, these, so, so these family health workers, they, um, uh, uh, they did health communication, health education through IVRS uh, to these uh, women and uh, these women then they uh, can call back IVRS uh, and their calls were recorded. So I'll, I'll explain you the entire flowchart. So in the interface, in my subsequent, so uh, yeah. So if you look at this slide, so this is how the interface of an IVRS looks like. So you have a welcome prompt and then uh, if it's a, uh, so in that welcome prompt, they ask whether you are an ASHA, a primary health worker, or you are a, a beneficiary or a young married woman. So if, if I say that, yes, I am a primary health worker, so then uh, I can, so there were further uh, sections in the IVRS. Either I can press one for frequently asked questions, or there were some knowledge based infotation, uh, infotainment sessions that I can actually listen to, or uh, there are something uh, for improving my counseling skills. So whichever option I press, then I will be addressed. Whether you want to focus on preconception care, whether you want something on antenatal or delivery care, or something on postnatal care, like this. And um, similarly for a beneficiary, it was whenever like the press one. If you press button like one. It's for your frequently asked questions, press two for knowledge, uh, infotainment like this. And further, they ask you whether you want information, something that have, uh, I mean, for preconception, for antenatal or postnatal, and then they give you further information. So uh, now, uh, if I have some query that was not addressed through FAQ or knowledge, and I want to have uh, my query being uh, addressed, then I used to uh, record my, um, I can record my question, and that question will actually go back to my server a central server and that will be taken up by a medical doctor uh, and the medical doctor will call back uh, and respond to the query that has been asked. So you don't need to actually have, uh, I mean, you can record your query in, in IVRS and then that can be answered later on by a medical expert. Uh, so you don't need to have a 24 hour medical doctor in place uh, for responding to a query. So if you look back again at this, so this is how, uh, so uh, if you look at the woman, so woman, between 15 24 years so they can ask these questions so if they need some expert advice they can uh, record their question and that question through the server will reach medical doctor and the medical doctor can again call back uh, and answer the query of these women and uh, the and this entire mis the management information system was recorded for our data management by the it partner uh, so what were the major components? As I mentioned, the major components were the frequently asked question section. It had some knowledge based infotainment, so which makes it more interesting learning. Some experts uh, like you can ask some questions and there was an expert advice available uh, for uh, primary health workers. Counseling and skill development session were there and you also have an option to give your feedback. If suppose I did not like the uh, some of the services of IVRS. No, it is not working well. I need to change it. So of course there was an option to give your feedback and the feedback was again. It was received uh, uh, into the server by the IT partner and then they can make changes and adjustments accordingly. And this entire package was developed in the local language in Hindi. So that's about the IVRS and the interface with the users. Uh, 
and very very important thing that i wanted to give that what are the major components in preconception care that we addressed in our uh, project most of uh, most of uh, we were addressing contraception that was delaying the first pregnancy we were counseling providing counseling for better nutritional support to reduce anemia third you are also counseling for screening of pre existing diseases like diabetes hypertension or if they have some reproductive health problem then you are also providing some screening for reproductive tract infections or sexually transmitted infections or hiv and some counseling related to substance abuse so if you look at the evaluation design so we did this pre post intervention also we did, uh, so we took one district each in rajasthan and uttar pradesh and then we did purpose assessment for primary health workers sample size was 210 and for young women because we did this 360 degree approach of evaluation wherein we not only uh, uh, had this survey on the primary health workers but also evaluated our intervention from the beneficiaries perspective uh if you look at uh, the results now so you can see the increase in knowledge of midwives from pre test and post test or baseline and end line if you look at see from 28% it increased to 47% if you look at the increase in knowledge of primary health workers pre and post training so it increased from 22% to 38% and if you look at the percentage of midwives and primary health workers which are providing comprehensive preconception care so it increased from 17% at baseline to 34% at end line it was a, another this slide shows you the utilization of ivrs by users if you look at the left hand side um, the uppermost uh, box you can see the counseling on different components so preconception care was addressed most commonly around 228 uh, uh, calls were made for preconception care 201 calls were made for antenatal and 96 calls were made for post this shows that there is need uh, for preconception care counseling in the community that we need to address if you look at the right hand side and uh, the upper box you can see the uses of different components of ivrs so frequently asked questions were the most common calls were made on 600 calls were made for faqs and some 3400 calls were made for infotainment session if you look at the left hand side down the feedback and queries as i mentioned so some one or two feedbacks were received and some sensitive queries were addressed and total number of calls that were made by primary health workers around 3148 calls were made and some 21118 calls were made by young women and initially in the initial phase of the project the calls were not so much even as low as some 100 calls but eventually as the project uh, is Uh, uh it just picked up the speed and the call rate increased from just uh, 100 to 200 calls to over uh, 460 calls and to over around 2000 calls per month so that was like from 100 to 400 to 3000 calls so that's how the it picked up the speed then uh, the number of calls if you look at the next results yes the percentage of primary health workers that were providing some preconception care to young women and patient and length to some so you can see around it think so contraceptive counseling to women increased from 95 to 98 it's, it's already quite high so the increase wasn't so much contraceptive counseling to couples it increased from 9 to 17 delay of first pregnancy advice to mother in laws it increased from 36 because the service was also open to uh, the family uh, relatives of the young women including husbands and mother in laws so again it was used by them as well assisting in ass uh, uh, assistance in accessing contraceptivity increased and some nutrition related advice was also given through ivrs if you look at the next slide you can see the percentage of young women who were seeking treatment so seeking treatment for complications during pregnancy it increased around by 10% seeking treatment uh, for complications during delivery it increased by some around like 15% and for newborn it increased by 3 to 4% um if you look at the next results again the knowledge and practices of young women as i told you it's a 360 degree approach wherein we uh, analyze not only the beneficiary uh, not only the healthcare providers the uh, knowledge and usage but also the uh, beneficiary so their knowledge and practices also increase related to preconception care so they know their right age of pregnancy so they use so around 71% use any family planning method and around 86% think that yes iron folic acid should be consumed during pregnancy and yeah 
So this last slide from uh, results, we say that 89% of family health workers reported that IVRS provided information on preconception care comprehensively. 77% family health workers are able to clarify all queries from young women after using IVRS. So they were able to address their queries. Around 98% of family health workers reported that their knowledge related to periconception care has been increased by TESA or IVRS. And 99% family health workers reported that their skills have definitely improved after using IVRS. So that's really uh, encouraging and that's how the IVRS was accepted very well. Uh, not that it addressed the, because it was free of cost. It was toll free number, free of course, they did not have to pay anything. So it was toll free. So affordability was not an issue. Access because it was available just a phone away and most of them have, um, they don't need, uh, most of these users did not need the smartphones. It was simple phone that they could use. So accessibility was not because they can simply just pick up the phone and call and give a call to a user and they can respond back as soon as possible. So that was, so accessibility, affordability was addressed very well. So the acceptability was quite high. So if I summarize of what I said just now that yes, our intervention was very successful in sensitizing and building the capacity of midwives and primary health workers and um, the hand holding and mentoring support by midwives proved to be successful because uh, that mid, uh, midwives in their survey, they told that yes, we received a lot of mentoring support from medical officers and the primary health workers receive a lot of mentoring support uh, from uh, midwives. Uh, and this entire intervention project on preconception care. So that was really good. And IVRS as an M health intervention, it increased the outreach and use of periconception care services by young women. So they had a lot of queries they had. So they were able to. If you look at the uh, uh, way forward, so yes, IVR gives you a promising approach that can be scaled up to do a real time uh, mentoring and counseling support to midwives and health workers, where we can actually address periconception care and increase our reach to a large number of young couples because family planning, contraception is something that that India needs to address at the moment very importantly. It's something that we need to really address it now. And we need to try to integrate preconception care as a, in the continuum of care and the RMNCHA program of the country. It's very important. And yes, midwives, because everybody knows that midwives play a critical role in delivering prevention and uh, promotive services. So it's very important that whatever we do, that midwife should be a component of it. And I just want to add one more thing that a lot of emphasis has, and recently WHO has also released their uh, digital guidelines, uh, I mean, digital health guidelines, and it's really important. They So they say that digital health will be able to address our challenges of distance, our challenges of access, poor management, insufficient training. They will be addressing the challenges of infrastructure limitations and poor access to supplies. So digital health is really important. M health is really important. They will be able to address those challenges. Plus, but very important thing that they will not be able to replace the fundamental component that still will be addressed by our health system, our health workforce, our leadership. But yes, they will complement the uh, existing intervention. So uh, how important it is. So this is um, thanks a lot uh, and uh, thanks for your support uh, that you listen to my presentation. So there's a picture that I can show you. So one of our train, this picture belongs to one of our training uh, to primary health workers and one of our uh, team members uh, doing the training and then we found that yes people are actually using IVRS and they were just so their information their access to information right to information was just a call away thank you everyone yes Chris I'm done thank you very much Anthony that was really interesting um, and well, for me as an ex-IT professional, the mixture of, uh, of the use of IT um, for such an important aspect of life and health is really good. So does anyone have any questions for Shantanu? There'll be a few thank yous, I think, for the moment, Shantanu, and then we'll see. Shante, how do you de deal with the connectivity? Pardon, connectivity. Hello. Yes, internet yeah. connection. 
yeah so internet connection was not a problem because it was more like a server you give a call you uh, there was a toll free number that was given you just need to dial that number and then they ask you the server will ask you uh, what do you want are you a primary health worker or are you a uh, woman young woman so then i need to just press one so you don't need a smartphone you don't need an internet connection and if you have some query that needs to be answered by an expert you just simply record your message and then that will be recorded and that will go to the server and from the server it will reach the medical officer and the medical officer will again give you i mean he'll call you back and give you the answer so you don't need an internet some other or real time all you need is just uh, a good uh, uh, I mean connectivity uh, with no uh, internet as and, and and in areas like we selected Churu in Rajasthan and uh, um, this uh, in uh, Muzaffarnagar in Uttar Pradesh they have good uh, phone connectivity yeah. Hello. So, um, okay, and, and, and what happened with the um, with uh, these mothers or these girls that uh, need to use this uh, these forms? Uh, it was easy for them to use them. It was easy. Yes. So we did a survey before we actually started the program that how many of them are actually using phones, and we found that most of them have. Uh, uh, phone either it was uh, mobile or uh, I mean the mobile uh, without, without a smartphone or a normal ring to, uh, the normal telephone that we have in our household so most of them had uh, this phone so it wasn't a problem because either they were using their own phone mobile phone or they were using the mobile phone of their husbands so that's why I said at times it has happened that even the husbands were also calling because some of the times you have seen that preconception care in young married women was something that uh, because a newly married woman in India India is not allowed to uh, approach uh, a health worker very easily. They're not allowed to interact uh, 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 with the health worker so uh, easily because they, uh, I mean, there's a kind of system where mother-in-law try, try to overprotect their uh, daughter-in-laws from interacting with health workers because they have this notion that they will go for contraception. So their own queries are not easily uh, addressed. So this uh, use of, with the use of uh, mobile phone, it was quite easy for them to just make a call and answer and I mean they have their queries being at risk. So many of these women had their own mobile phones. Some of them used the uh, mobile phones of their husbands as well. So this made this accessibility as a barrier. I mean it just addressed this accessibility as a barrier. That's great. Thanks Shantanu. Um, I have a question for you. Uh, what yeah. other M health interventions under, precon under preconception care domain and what are the other ones that you're using? Yeah, so uh, thanks for that you asked this question now. Uh, say in Mamta, so this is one of the projects that Mamta, is, uh, Mamta did uh, in the past, but uh, we had other projects like another project that I'm working with uh, is where we are using the other approaches of M Health, uh, which includes uh, WhatsApp texting. So, what we do is that we have the, in our community based intervention, we have this WhatsApp group of young couples. So, wherein uh, these young couples they are uh, provided information on various upcoming information on contraception, on upcoming information on some uh, kind of infection coming in the community or regarding vaccination for example HPV papil uh, human papillomavirus infection that's the cat for survival preventing cervical cancer so they often such kind of health related information is circulated through whatsapp messages we even did this program through an sms messages because a smartphone is not available to everyone in rural areas so what we did is we just uh, send them through our central server we'd send one liner two liner messages in local languages uh, of all the numbers that we had with us and then on like for example breastfeeding promotion or on contraception and keep them reminding about uh, the various health education messages so i mean digital health is the next i mean it's uh, now it's an era of using as much as possible with digital health because it's really promising because it addresses your accessibility barrier it accesses it is acceptable and mobile phones are like something that are i mean it's so commonly used by everyone including smartphones so this gives you very promising uh, so results yeah thank you very much Anthony. um we've probably got time for maybe one or two more questions if anybody has another question
It's interesting to see what uh, you might call appropriate technology because um, in the UK, the National Health Service is trying to roll out the use of technology, but it's completely different because of the nature of the, of the UK technical environment. So it's very interesting to see um, cutting edge technology, but being used appropriately. Exactly. And, and, and if you have just one minute, Chris, I will also remind you because I'm right now in Sweden and I have an eight month old uh, child. So, you know, she's undergoing immunization. So vaccination. So in Sweden, I mean, they they invest a lot on this digital health. So what uh, we get that, uh, you know, we get these reminders. Uh, we had this uh, visits to uh, midwives. So we have this uh, 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 pre-scheduled uh, visits to midwives so and at times it happens that you are so much engaged in your work that you for, uh, you forget oh shit i had an i had a meeting with midwife so what they have done is they register your mobile number and a day before 24 hours before your visit to midwife they, they send you a reminder message okay you have a scheduled appointment with the midwife okay and that gives you okay i have an appointment <laughs> Yeah, so that's really important because that gives you, uh, I mean, a reminder. And, and so they have a lot of uh, interventions related to M Health uh, in countries, high income countries like Sweden. Reminders. So again, M Health can be used for sending you reminders for immunization, for your um, uh, visits to midwives. And uh, and also can give call like they have this. Uh, my wife a uh, few months back when she was pregnant, she was uh, undergoing labor pain. So they have this toll free numbers where you can dial and call because every time you can't go and it's a false labor pain. So you can call your midwife, tell your symptoms, and she can okay fine. You don't need to come. You can just handle it. And if you still have any problem, come over to me. So it's how I mean uh, it's it's so easy to use They're just a phone call away. And I mean it's really interesting in countries like Sweden because high income countries they give you a lot of uh, evidence for M health. Yeah, indeed so. Okay, um, I think we will leave it there. I just would like to say again, thank you very much. Um, thank you for a, for a very interesting presentation. Okay.